Good morning! Our lesson for today is about turns and angles formed by tangents and secants. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to find the measure of angles formed by secants and tangents. Recall that a secant is a line, a ray, or a segment that intersects a circle in exactly two points. In the figure, there is one and only one secant drawn in circle O. This is secant AB. We put a symbol on the top of AB, a line with a double-headed arrow, to signify that the secant is a line. Take a look that the secant contains a chord. This is chord AB. We put a bar line on top of chord AB to symbolize that AB is a line segment. But since by definition, secant is defined as a segment that intersects the figure at two distinct points. Hence, chord AB can be called a secant AB. As you've noticed, there are two secants intersect in the circle. These two secants are secant AB or secant CS. These two lines intersect at point M. Colored, uh, color red. The point of intersection is point M. What figure is formed when two secants intersect? Yes, they form angles. How many angles are formed? Very good. There are four angles formed. Angle forms inside the circle. Note that these angles have common vertex. That is point M. You can name angles in three different ways. First, by three letters with a vertex in the middle. Second, using its vertex and using number. Using three letters, we have angle AMC, the yellow angle, and the blue angle named as angle BMS. The measure of angle AMC, or the yellow angle, is equal to the measure of angle BMS, the blue angle. Why? Because the measure of the vertical angles are equal or vertical angles are congruent. Since we can name angle AMC using number, so angle AMC can be named as angle 1. And so, with angle BMS can be named as angle 2. So, we can say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Again, vertical angles are congruent. Can you name another congruent angles aside angle 1 and angle 2? That's correct. Angle 3 and Angle 4 Angle 3 and Angle 4 are congruent angles. So, the measure of Angle 3 is equal to the measure of Angle 4. What about Angle 1 and Angle 3? What can you say about the sum of the measures of Angle 1 and Angle 3? That's good. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. Because angle 1 and angle 3 are linear pair. And linear pair are supplementary angles. Speaking of supplementary angles, the sum of the two angles is 180 degrees. Okay, as you can see, 
we have here two secants, uh, line CS and line AP. These two secants intersect inside the circle. If two secants intersect the circle, they form four angles. We can find the measure or the degree measure of each angle using theorem number one. So we have here uh, example number one. To find the measure of angle uh, one formed by two secants intersecting inside the circle, we're going to use theorem number one. Theorem number one states that the measure of angle formed by two secants intersecting inside the circle is one half the sum of the measure of its intersected arm. So in symbol, we can say that the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of x and y, where x and y are the measure of its intercepted arc. As you've noticed, the intercepted arc of angle 1 is AC, and the uh, intercepted arc of angle 2 is BS. So their measures are 70 and 110 respectively. So get the sum, that is 180 degrees, times 1 half, or shall I say 180 divided by 2. So therefore, the answer is 90. So the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. And so with angle 2, because the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 are equal. Why? Because vertical angles are congruent. Angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. Okay, for example number 2, Applying the same theorem, so we are going to find the measure of angle 3. So in order to find the measure of angle 3, we need to uh, solve first the measure of angle 1. So the measure of angle 1 can be obtained by finding uh, the sum of the its two intercepted arc and get half of it where x and y are the measures of its intercepted arcs. The measure of the two intercepted arcs are 60 degrees and 130 degrees respectively, which is colored green and violet. To find the measure of angle 1, just simply substitute uh, x and y, which is 60 and 130, so that is 190 degrees. Get uh, half of it, so 190 divided by 2 is 95. So, uh, yes, so the measure of angle 1 is 95. And to find uh, the measure of angle 3, uh, the measure of angle 3 is 85. So, why? Because angle 1 and angle 3 are a uh, linear pair. So, the sum of the measures of angle 1 and angle 3 is equivalent to 180 degrees because they form a linear pair. So, to find the measure of angle 3, so 180 minus 95 is 85 degrees. For example, number 3, we're going to reverse the process but we still use the same theorem, theorem number 1, because as you can see, there are two secants intersecting inside the circle. Okay, so, but uh, notice that one of the arc of the arcs is uh, missing, and the given is the angle, the measure of the angle formed inside the circle. Now, in order to do that, we're going to substitute the value of angle one, which is 94 degrees, uh, then copy yung value ng x. Uh, there's no value for x, so copy x. And then the value of y is 112. Bring down 1 half. Okay, and then to remove uh, 1 half, we're going to multiply both sides by uh, 2. So cancel yung 1 half and 2. What is left is 2 and 94. And 112 plus x. 2 times 94 is 188. Then bring down 112 plus x. To solve for x, we're going to use addition property of equality. So, 188 minus 112 is equal to x. 
and x is equivalent to 76 degrees. To determine whether our answer is correct, uh, by substitution using uh, theorem number 1, we just simply add the two uh, measures of the intercepted arcs which are 76 and 112 respectively. So the sum is 188, then divided by 2, the answer is 94, which is the same as the given or the measure of the angle inside the circle. Aside from secant, we can name another figure which is drawn in circle O. And this is called tangent. Tangent is a line, array, or a segment that intersects a circle in one and only one point. As you can see, we have line HP, and this line HP is called a tangent line. The line HP and circle O intersect at point P. Point P is called the point of tangency. Aside from theorem number 1, we can also use theorem number 2 in solving for the angles formed in the circle. But this time, the angle is formed outside the circle. If the angle is formed outside the circle, we're going to use the theorem number 2 wherein the measure of angle formed by two lines intersecting outside the circle is one-half the difference of the measure of its intercepted arcs, the big arc minus small arc. We have three cases here. The first case is the angle formed by two secants. The second case is the angle formed by tangent and a secant. And for the third case, the angle is formed by two tangents. For simplicity, uh, we simply name uh, those angles formed outside the circle by angle 1. Okay? And the two arcs, the, the smaller arc, which is the pink arc, and the bigger arc, which is the blue arc. Okay? So, applying the formula, the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of the difference between the two intersected arcs, the big arc minus the small arc. For example, number four, um, this is case number three uh, because uh, the given angle is formed outside the circle. This angle outside of the circle is formed by two tangents. Now, to find the measure of angle 1, we need to get the difference between the two intercepted arcs. But notice that one of the measure of the intercepted arc, or the blue one, is missing. So, what are we going to do to find the measure of the blue arc? Okay. So, remember that the degree measure of a circle is 360 degrees. To find the measure of the blue arc or the big arc, we just simply subtract 92 from 360 degrees. So, 360 degrees minus 92 degrees is equal to 268 degrees. Knowing the two uh, measures of the intercepted arc, we'll be able to find the measure of angle 1. How? We just simply substitute the value of the two arcs, which is uh, 92 and 268. So, 268 minus 92 divided by 2, we have 88 degrees. Okay, let us continue. For example, number 5, we have two secants intersecting outside the circle. So, their intercepted arcs are 30 degrees and 150 degrees respectively. So, in order to find the measure of angle 1, again, we are going to apply the theorem number 2. We just simply subtract the, two, the measure of the two intercepted arcs, then substitute. So, the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of 150 and 30 
which is 120 divided by 2. So, therefore, the measure of angle 1 is 60 degrees. For example, number 6, we have an angle formed by a tangent and a secant. But still, they intersect outside the circle. Okay? And we're going to use the same theorem, which is theorem number 2. We just simply subtract the two intercepted arcs, which are 170 degrees and 20 degrees. What do you think is the measure of angle 1? Okay, correct. So, in order to find the measure of angle 1, we just uh, simply use the formula, the difference between the two arcs, x and y. So, 170 minus 20 is 150 divided by 2. So, the measure of angle 1 is 75 degrees. From the previous slide, we discussed that to find the measure of an angle formed outside the circle, formed by tangent and secant, we just simply subtract the two intercepted arc. Okay? To find the measure, so from the previous slide, we have the two uh, measures of intercepted arcs, which are 20 and 170 degrees respectively. So 170 minus 20 is 150 divided by 2, that is 75 degrees. So therefore, the measure of angle outside the circle formed by tangent and secant is 75 degrees, applying theorem number 2. Now, in, in this example number 7, we apply the same theorem, but this time, one of the intercepted arcs is missing. Okay? And let us represent uh, this arc by letter X. Okay? So, to find the measure of angle 1, which is uh, using theorem number 2, uh, just simply substitute uh, the value of the angle, which is 75 degrees. Okay? So, the measure of angle 1 is 75, then bring down 1 half, and x minus y, which are actually the intercepted arcs. Then, copy x, and then the value of y is 20 degrees. Then, multiply both sides by 2. Then, um, cancel 1 half and 2. What is left is 2 times 75, which is 150. Bring down x minus 20. To solve for x, we're going to use the addition property of equality, which is uh, 150 plus 20. Uh, x is equal to 170 degrees. Okay, so question. Okay, so if you have no question, for your assignment, you're going to do page 24, lesson 6. 10 points each, show your solution, so a total of 40 points. Okay, so take a uh, look at number 4. Uh, one of the intercepted arc is 120. So, in order to find the measure of the other intercepted arc, uh, remember that the degree measure of a circle is always 360 degrees. So, just simply subtract 300, uh, 120 degrees from 360 degrees in order to obtain the measure of the other intercepted arc. That's all. Thank you and have a good day.